pressure low. It'll be grand. Hello, everyone, and fall chikuti, another stellar episode of Sure It'll Be Grand, a podcast where two Irish idiots talk absolute and complete shite about a movie, life, and anything else that happens to pop into our heads as we're recording. I am a small Asian child, and with me as always is Dan. Say hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Well done. You nailed it. Uh, So for this week, I was maybe mistakenly given the power to choose our movie, and it's possible I abused that power. (laughs) It's very possible. I may never be allowed to choose a movie again after this fiasco, but before we jump straight into that, let's just catch up. What's been going on this week? Anything new, Dan? Anything new? I've been watching uh, Star Trek, The Mandalorian. Like that's the weird thing now. Like I can go and watch Star Trek and Star Wars at the end of the week, one day after the other, and it's it's it it's weird time travel to experience that. And I've been continuing making my dice and stuff, and got a three D printer now, and so I'm being obnoxiously posting about that every two seconds on my Facebook. I can confirm um, both of those things. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm back to work uh end of this week and then probably back out for COVID in about two weeks when everything will fall apart again. And yeah, that's that's about it. Uh yourself. Um I have been doing none of those things. I have been mm-hmm. watching The Mandalorian, not not Star Trek though. I'm I'm more of wars than Trek. Kind of guy, I guess. I I like balance in my life. That's fair. I I tend to favor getting really really into one side of things to a point where I watch too much of it and then get bored of it. Yeah, and then everything's kind of ruined for you. Yeah, it's generally how I live my life. In, yeah, yeah. In most places. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so last time out we talked about Doctor Who, and Dude. how. Bad movies and bad performances can be enjoyable. Yeah. This time we out, enjoyed the movie. We did. We enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah. This time, we're doing. It's another. It's a really awful '90s movie, but this was not enjoyable, at least no. for one of us. The movie we're doing is called A Gnome Named Norm, oh, or Upworld. AKA Upworld. It was called Upworld in some releases, but. Uh, we're gonna call it a gnome named Gnorm. and it's. I'm a, probably just gonna call it gnome to be yeah, honest. Yeah, probably. It's 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 really bad, but it's just to give you a little bit of info before we dive into the plot. This movie yes, was released lots. in was released in 1990, and it is a body cop creature feature puppet movie type yeah. thing. It was directed by Stan Winston, who, for anybody who doesn't know, Stan is a Stan is a like really renowned special effects like makeup kind of guy he's won like i think it's four academy awards for like best effects and stuff he runs a company he done he's done a shitload of work with james cameron and he's basically responsible for an awful lot of things in pop culture that are really popular today for like he's designed the terminator aliens the dinosaurs in jurassic park he worked on Mm. the first iron man movie for the mcu he passed away, I think, a couple of years ago. But that's that was his bag, and this was I mean, his. We can, we can, one thing we can say about it is like, whatever you want to say about the movie, the actual puppet and for this movie was pretty. Yeah, he looks cool. fine. It was freaky looking, but it was yeah, really well done. It, yeah, it was. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Physical effects, I suppose. Yeah. This was his second movie, I think. He had one movie that he directed before this, which I think is called Pumpkinhead, which is. I think it's a culty, har- Halloween-y, horror classic yeah. thing. So the screenplay what for this, this was written by John Watson and Penn Densham, who immediately after this went and wrote Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Which is amazing. We should watch that. Which is a good movie. Yeah. It's not so bad. This movie stars Anthony Michael Hall, who people will know from the Brat Pack fame, all those John Hughes movies, The Breakfast Club, and... Uh, the other one, <laughs> sixteen candles. Ah, yes, the other one. <laughs> the other one yes. that he's in, sixteen candles. Jerry Orbach, who plays the captain of detectives in this movie. What yeah. movie do you think he was in? Because this blew my mind. I mean, 
I'm gonna be honest, maybe it was just the, the connection to um the um other actor, but uh kind of looks like the principal from the Breakfast Club, the teacher a little bit. No, I get where you're coming from. You yeah. mean the the guy that's monitoring yeah. I'm them not in the biggest breakfast Saturday Club detention fan. No, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not him. Jerry Orbach is the voice Ooh. of Lumiere in Beauty and the Beast. Really? Beach. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the act, person, he sure can do accents, to be fair. Is is he American? Is he... What is, I'm 90% sure he's American, yeah. He is. He was American. He passed away in 2004, but yes, he was I, I American like actor. I feel probably still American if you died. No, Just no. When, when you're you dead, revoked when, you're dead. <laughs> when you die, you lose all nationality. That's how it you're works. You're from heaven now. Yeah, in heaven, there are no, there's no race, there's no religion, there's no... And there's no John Lennon, thankfully. Very much thankfully. We're, we're back on fighting John Lennon again. Yeah. Anyway, to fill out the rest Colin of the Carroll's cast... Carroll's just wiping his forehead going, Oh, thank Ooh. God, they've moved on. They found a new target. <laughs> <laughs> but to, just to fill out the rest of the cast, uh, Claudia Christian, Robert Zadar, and Gnorm the Gnome as himself. Because that's partly how they build it when this was released. Oh, so that, they, and so the voice actor is just not respected? No, it's listed as a. Uh, I I tried to figure it out, and the the role of Norm the gnome is listed as multiple people. Okay. So I don't know if like they're just saying like there was people working the puppet and there was other people yeah. doing Little bits voices. and pieces of voices and stuff. But they build it on posters and stuff as and introducing as himself Norm the gnome, hmm. and that went well for them. I mean. You know, at least they don't have that tarnished their career, so there's that. Yeah, at least. Well, uh, yeah, I think it it really hurt Norm the Gnome's career. Yeah, because he's yeah. an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the thing, um, and I guess we'll talk about it when we get into the plot. But this movie had um, a lot of similarities to our mythical missing episode that we keep referencing in every single recordings, which is Artemis Fowl. Aha. Yeah. The so infamous talk- Artemis Fowl. Oh, it, it's too good to air. That's why we haven't. Yeah, it's, it. it's honestly, it's as a podcast, we can't allow people to listen to it because they would never, all, none of our other episodes would compare. It's yeah, and it'd, be un- it'd just be unfair to other podcasters out there. Like, you know. Yeah, that's why we're not released. That's why it's not been released yet. Yeah. We create 100%. a monopoly and then everything's gone to crap. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Okay, so there's not really much else to say in lieu of interesting tidbits about this thing that I could really find. So let's you dive... The whole movie is an interesting tidbit, really. Isn't kind it? of, yeah. But let's yeah. dive straight in to what the hell is going on here. I mean, what the hell is going on? Tell us, Kevin Bacon, what the hell is going on here? I, 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 I'm going to leave that one to you because... Okay, I, uh... right. So we'll go for the plot, I guess. The plot, in a nutshell, is Anthony Michael Hall plays a like a wisecracking. I think Luke's he. Cannon. I think he wants to be a stand-up comedian or something. Yeah. He's a police. He's a Los Angeles police department detective named Which Casey. Which you find very well, um, you know, broadcasted by him wearing a hat with LAPD. Yeah, he wears that. He wears good yeah, he first ten minutes of the movie. Yeah. But he, his name is Casey Gallagher, who they call Gallagher in the movie because they're yeah. Americans and they can't pronounce things. Jerry Orbach plays his captain of detectives, Stan Walton, who has an incredible... I, I wonder if it's his real accent, but he, sp- he speaks in this like he's a like he's Al Capone or something at times. Yeah, yeah. We did a murder. We got a murder going on here, Gallagher. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Claudia Both Christian... Both of the country there, fella. Yeah, I will. Claudia... 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 Claudia Christian... Plays Samantha, who's Casey's Who partner. I thought she was very popular and so on and everything, but turns out no. I basically only saw in she, ba- uh, not Battlestar Galactica. Was it Babylon Five? That's it. Yes, she was in that, and she did a, she did a voice for a character in a, the Disney Atlantis, the Lost Empire movie. But she looks, yeah. and I still I still haven't figured it out. She looks she looks identical to another actress that was probably super popular in the nineties. And I can't figure and out who it is. If you know who, 
Please tell us. Please, please let me know who I'm thinking of because I can't. It's like the curly hair and the same sort of face. I just couldn't figure it out. I uh, still haven't. I thought it was the actress from uh, Look Who's Talking Now. Yeah, now. yeah. You thought it was Kirsty Alley. Yeah. I don't think that's not who I'm thinking of. Apparently, a of, mental least. Scientologist. Now, yeah, yeah. She's a nut job. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's crazy. It's not her. It's somebody else. Um, but essentially, the plot is there's a sting operation going down in a park that that looks abandoned but it's not it's apparently just a public park who knows casey is like staking out the place and uh i'm at there's like a drug thing a, i, I think, think it's drugs like yeah. there somebody's exchanging money for something yeah. not really clear who or what is happening but it's a bad guy and he's doing bad things and casey has to find him Casey gets distracted practicing his stand-up comedy routine for yeah. nobody in the park, and he gets knocked out, and then a bomb uh, blows up. Somebody dies. Yeah, let's be fair. Also, like he gets knocked out, and his partners are calling him in, saying, "Casey, are you okay?" And he doesn't respond, and they just go like, "Oh, he's probably on the swings." Ha ha ha! It's like <laughs> it's your job to keep an eye on him. What's wrong with you? Yeah, they don't because everybody hates him for some reason. Everybody in the yeah, police department. Partners, his partner's clearly his deeply partners. From Yeah, she's somehow. amazing. But everybody else is like, oh, this Casey guy, he's such a fucking fuck up. He's a moron. He's an idiot. You look, at, look what he just did. This guy got blown up. You're like, yes, it wasn't because he was incompetent. He got knocked out. Like somebody yeah. physically attacked him and knocked him out. It wasn't like he yeah, just yeah. like was like, oh, fuck it, let's get high. And he missed the whole thing or something like. <laughs> Pretty much. But meanwhile, a gnome named Gnorm. Yes, a gnome, gnome. Is digging his way to the surface world with his hands. Well, he has these little cuff things that he puts in his hands and he just like... like Flintstone kind of things he has like just, on his fist. Yeah, he just like crawls his way through the dirt. He pops up and witnesses the moida. Yeah. He sees the whole thing because that's what happens. I don't know. Yeah. Casey kidnaps him. Well, he captures him. Thinks he's a... Re- yeah. No, sorry. Casey finds a bag hanging from a tree afterwards that has a... We weird... don't get told, by the way, how the... Bag gets no. there, really. It has a I weird think. gem in it. And Casey's like, oh, what the hell is this? The Lumen. 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 That's Give me Lumen. So it wasn't Lumen. <laughs> it wasn't Luminaire, the whole no, 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 Beauty no, and the Beast thing. Wasn't. <laughs> well, there wasn't a reference. <laughs> he just looked at that yeah. name and went, you know what? I could play a character like that. It'd be amazing. Probably, yeah. Because this was the, was this the, yeah, this was the year before Beauty yeah. and the Beast came out. So maybe Jerry Aubrey went straight from this to Beauty and the Beast. Which That's I the only good thing you could take from that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that probably. name's kind of nice. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so he, Casey finds this thing and goes, hey, this is cool. Hangs it around his neck for some reason, which he does a lot. He keeps yeah. hanging it around his neck. But he goes home. Ganorm follows him home because he wants the gem. Because he, he Ganorm brought the gem to the surface because we find out later he needs to expose it to direct sunlight. Or his people will die, or something. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Casey captures him in a cage, and he's like, "Whoa, what the hell is this thing?" Brings it into his apartment rather than calling animal control or something. Just brings yeah. it in, and puts him on the sofa, and puts goes, his fucking ah. fingers in the cage and everything. Like when yeah. he's lifting it up, and just kind of like, Jesus like, "What are you Christ. doing, bro? This yeah. you found a, a crazy wild. For all you know, it's a rabid raccoon that just attacked you in the garage, and you've just brought it into your home." <laughs> Pretty much. Gnorm escapes from his cage. Him and Casey have a bit of Gnome. a... Yeah, they have a bit of a tussle. Casey yeah. wins, sort of. I think. Yeah. Maybe. Not sure. They... Yes, he does. He wins and he's like, you gotta tell me exactly what you saw in the park. You're a witness. At this point, Gnorm can't speak English. No. Really. He just kind of goes... Mah! And yeah. says... Give me Luman. Luman. Every once in a while. That changes. By the end of the movie, Gnorm, like, understands human sexuality and... Oh, very stuff. much literally the last line. Yeah, Ooh. basically. The, the, you know what? We'll say now. The last line in the movie is, make her toes curl. Yeah, which Gnorm shouts at Casey in telling him to shift the face off of Samantha, his partner. Yeah. It's very, very weird. The whole movie, that's essentially the plot. Like, that's it. From there on out, there, Casey and Gnorm. Or Gnorm is trying to get the Lumen back to save his people. Yeah. And Casey's trying to prove 
somebody blew up somebody in the park. I don't really know what yeah, and obviously they can use this um, mythical gnome from another mm. world as yeah. um, a witness, you know. Yeah, essentially, yeah. And at some point throughout, Gnorm and Casey become friends. They bond over a shared love of titties. Oh yeah, Jesus! This thing loves titties. He loves it. Oh, by the way, I found it afterwards. the The version we watched was the uncut strip club version. Oh, so we got the script club, which so, was fantastic yeah. in its natural nineties, mm. so late yeah. 80s state. <laughs> I think when this was released, like in cinemas or whatever, originally, uh, it had a more kid friendly rating, and none of the strip club stuff and all the titty stuff wasn't in it. I don't yeah. think. I mean, Did they have less of the spit in it too, because that was weird. God. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he just kept on spitting. And Could, didn't he say like he liked uh, girls who were really good at like sucking fingers or something like that? What was it? Like that was like that was a sexual trait amongst the gnomes. Did he? And he says, "Oh, find yourself a girl who's really good at sucking fingers." Like, Gnorm like said that. I think something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it was weird. And he, yeah. I must uh, have blacked. I must have blacked out for that moment. Thank, <laughs> your thankful, brain protected. Thankful, you. yeah, like, no, yeah, we can't I, do this. I saw him spitting into his hands and just went, "No, I don't need to remember this thing." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's um, the whole movie. It's shite. it's crass and unintelligent and weirdly like offensive somehow. Lots lots of sexism and like little vague racism there as well. I think. Like if it was yeah. done in movies now, you would have gone, "Oh Jesus!" And that's not like oh, social justice warriors, snowflake. Blah. It's not that. It's like you'd watch it now and go, "Oh, that that aged, that aged poorly." That, you know, it really, it really. Ha- I don't even know. See, I I don't know if I can say that this aged poorly because I don't think this was good. Like I don't think people, anybody watched this and at the time and went, Haha, "What a movie! That was so <laughs> funny." Did you see that creepy gnome and how he likes tits? <laughs> there's, there's just some surfer dude who's an absolute brick who loved this movie. They're probably yeah, this <laughs> yeah man. Every, fucking yeah, class. everything has a, everything has at least one fan. And <laughs> there's somebody out there who's obsessed. They with have all the, the merchandise, the posters, like the original casting for the doll and everything. Yeah, and I'm calling it. I'm calling it a gnome named Gnorm, by the way, because they say that in the movie. Yeah. It's the gnomes. He, even though yeah. for the longest time he's like, "Oh, you're an elf, you're an elf," and it's like, "What kind of fucking elves were you looking at, lad?" Yeah, he caught. He <laughs> thinks he he, and then he, Gnorm is corrects him all the time. He's like, "I'm not an elf, I'm a gnome," and <laughs> Casey's like, "Ah, oh, an elf and gnome, they're all the same. Who gives a shit? It's, uh, it's basic stuff, yeah. man. They're the same thing." And you're like, "No, they're hey. not." Hey, hey, remember that scene where a hearse was driving and like the coffin fell out the back? And there was a dead guy, and someone didn't see the hearse and ran to give it like mouth to mouth resuscitation. And yeah. he's like, "Ha, dude, this guy's dead already. Do you see the hearse in the coffin?" And you see the guy's face and has all the makeup from like the morgue on him. You look at him, and it's like done as a cheap laugh. But all you can think about is like, what must that guy go through for therapy for the rest of his life? He, like, yeah, his life is ruined. It's yeah, over it's forever. Up. It's just and. Then we have that scene just beforehand where uh, the police officer, our main hero, um, yeah, sure, uh, he's the I'm... steals a like takes hold of um, a hearse to drive and just pulls out this black guy and like you know <laughs> you have like nowadays well, it, you know it's always obviously wrong but like to see a police officer stealing a car from a black man and like. Rip him out and just say, "Oh, it's, it's fine." It's like, "Oh, that 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 wouldn't work now at all." No, and maybe that's why we had some massive riots two years later from this movie in yeah, America. Yeah, this 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 movie contributed to the start of the LA riots. Yeah, I'm not Very much not so. to downplay the plight of Rodney King or anything, but yeah. this helped. <laughs> this didn't no, didn't but help. For comedic <laughs> moments. We are gonna blame it on that. Yeah, it's this this was what did it. People saw that scene and went, hey, we're not standing for this any longer. But it like took a while for it to build. It took maybe yeah, two yeah. years and then they finally went, no, we can't stand for this anymore. Between the movie Gnome 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 and the Rodney <laughs> King incident, <laughs> we're not standing for this anymore. It's a bit of a footnote, but it's there. You yeah, you can it. see it. It's a historical fact. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's, 
that's that kind of something you don't see in general in movies anymore. A lot of like '90s cop movies always had a scene where like a, the police officer would like commandeer somebody's vehicle. Yeah, they just run up and like pull a woman out of a car and go, "I'm a police officer. I need this vehicle," and just tear oh. off. And it's usually it's either like, "Oh, I don't know what's going yeah. on," or it's just like, "Hey man, oh, hey man, don't you do can't that, man. Don't take my car, man. I gotta get to work." Yeah, stuff like that. Like that. And I wonder. <laughs> I think the fact that he like because he doesn't Casey. He doesn't realize it's a hearse until he starts driving it. Yeah, and when he and he also that it's a it's a funeral procession. Yeah, because there's a there's a coffin in the back and there's a car there's a procession of cars following him slowly mm. and then he goes oh crap and I wonder if this was the movie's attempt to go, <laughs> you know all those eighties buddy cop movies yeah. like Lethal Weapon and all like all those things that just come out I wonder if they were like ah there's here's us taking them down. This is what could happen if a cop really does these things. And it's like, um, could it though? Um, I don't know. <laughs> He'd probably stop once he realizes it's a hearse. Oh, oh my God. Oh, okay. I am so, so sorry. Yeah. This is terrible. Yeah, I'm really. Even like hearses aren't even that fast. My bad. Yeah. He uh, didn't, he didn't. Another Im- taxi. <laughs> He'd immediately be like reprimanded by everybody then as well yeah. and that's the thing I don't think anybody brings it up his captain are, is never like dude you you stole a hearse with a corpse yeah. in it crashed it into a wall and spilled the coffin and a person's dead body out onto the street you're do clearly you fired the, <laughs> do you think the lad that the, he robbed the car from was just so shocked by someone trying to steal a hearse that he didn't even bother saying hey this is a hearse yeah, it, what the fuck are you at what, it's a hearse like he <laughs> I don't care you're if you're just a police like, officer. You're just so beyond going like, don't do this. Yeah. And what if like nobody in the funeral procession, like they would have seen him take the hearse. It, like it was nobody, they're so overcome with grief at the funeral that they never thought to go like. one person who's just like, huh, like did, wow. Did some guy just <laughs> steal the hearse? I think that's probably one person that was, he's just like loving it. Yeah. Like, oh, Jesus. Like, Whoa, yeah. somebody, somebody just stole my granddad's corpse. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. This movie's fucked up, essentially. Yeah. Like, there's nothing in it that it's just so low hanging fruit, low bar stuff, and they yeah. really they dig a hole for it. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. much so. There's no real. It's gonna be a struggle to find redeeming features when we get to the next section. Yeah, I'm. I'm still thinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I came up with much. It's it's very. I think of one good thing. I read you mentioned it, kind of. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so. like okay, this was kind of, and this is this is wh- when I was saying at the start that maybe I won't be allowed to pick the movies anymore. I I picked this based on one thing, and that was I saw somebody tweeted a very short clip of what turned out to be the last scene in the movie, which is make a toast car. Gnorm, gnome the oh god gnome the gnome shouting at the human couple, telling them to do sexy things or whatever. After, by the way, we found out right before that in the movie, the Gnorm the Gnome kisses Samantha. And I mean, kiss. Like kisses her, like full on. That girl yeah. made out with a gnome puppet. Like she went, ah, he did all this. Sure, I'll give him a snoot. Yeah. And they went I th- for it. I think she was just going to give him like a little, ah, go, you're, you know, go ahead, little guy, and give him a yeah. little peck. And not Gnorm was like, give it to me, baby. Uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, and just that's it, pretty much. Tongued her. I mean, also, let's be fair, he went on this entire adventure to get some. Um, Gnome oh, yeah, yeah. Asked, mm-hmm. you know. Gnar made up this story about how all his people were going to die, and it turns out it was just they do no, I do. Think that was still. No, I think. Was still, I it's think just warriors went together. Yeah, I, wasn't but I think he said it's just like a, a ritual thing that warriors do once every 10 years, and he wasn't, yeah. a, and only warriors get gnome pussy, so he wasn't yeah. allowed to do it. So he stole the lumen and. Or no man himself. Let's be fair. No, no. Well, he said. Well, the warriors. Yeah, Gnorm himself has a woman that oh, he yeah, fancies, yeah. doesn't he? he well, a, a gnome yeah, yeah. lady. He mentions her. Yeah, he mentions her name, but literally not important. No, can't, I can't remember what it is. <laughs> My brain really would have never yeah. put that down as memory. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't care enough right now to look it up or anything. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> thing. No, it's, it's whatever. It's Gnome's irrelevant. doing. Yeah, he's doing this. It's for not the even that he's in love or something. He just yeah. wants, you know. He no, he's just, bang. yeah, it's like, I'm a digger. Diggers don't get to have sex with gnome ladies, and I want to do that. And that's it. Yeah. That's his That's his motivation for the movie. 
Casey's motivation is ah, jokes. Uh, the police think I'm bad at being police. Yeah, I gotta prove myself. Even though I, I am be bad behind at... a desk for yeah. the next six months. Oh no! Which I still felt like ah, oh, that sounds like a probably the safest it's place true. for a Los Angeles police detective in 1990. <laughs> You'll be in a desk for the next two to three years. Cool. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's we it's what's what, what was weird for me as well is that I watched this we watched this for the show and that the night before I watched the first rush hour which is another buddy cop movie yes a good which one. pairs like two people who you don't think are going to get along yeah. and aren't going to work well together together in a team yeah. and it's great it's a really good movie and it's yeah. funny the hair of Mel and Gibson's hair no 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 that's lethal weapon Oh, same thing. Rush Hour is uh, <laughs> Rush Hour is Jackie Chan. Oh, Jackie Chan. Jackie yeah. Chan and Love Chris, the hair too. Chris Chris Tucker, who was Kevin Hart before Kevin Hart was Kevin Hart. But it's yeah. um, it's and a really Chris good Rock movie. Somewhere in between. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Chris <laughs> Tucker was an archetype of loud, just <laughs> like know? a nasally like <laughs> voice, like what do you mean, Jackie? Oh, and yeah. it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. not going to do that voice anymore. Rush Hour is g- like a, it's we- it was weird to watch that. And then cut to this, which I think like it had the same signpost. But I think maybe this was trying to be like a a deconstruction of body cop movies oh, or something. D- but d- like, d- 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 you take that back. This movie never tried to do anything artistic. I, f- I feel ever. like I feel like that's that's what Stan Winston wanted the movie to be when he came up with the concept of a crazy loose cannon Los Angeles police detective teams up with. A gnome from the underworld. Uh, um, <laughs> like, a gnome. A gnome. Sorry. Sorry, yes. Norm says it's a gnome. It's a gnome named Gnorm. Again, not relevant in any way. Correct. No, not really. It's just, a, I think it's a joke they tried to put in because saying gnome, a gnome named Gnorm. Yeah. It's fun. A I gnome personally like Norm it. sounds good too. A gnome named Norm. A gnome named Norm. A gnome named Gnorm. Gnorm, 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 Gnorm. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I guess we have to. I guess. On. Yeah, I guess we have to try. Let's yeah. head into some things we liked, things we didn't like. Uh, yeah. Or we shall strike a balance between culture and fun. I don't know if there'll be much balance this week. But we usually aim for three things yeah. we like and three things we don't. And usually we're a bit. There's a little bit of gray in the middle, but you know, we I try, try to. to. I like to think that there is in any movie there is always I can always find something I liked. This time out. Dan, did you have three things you liked? I liked the puppetry. Puppetry was very well done, to the extent where I thought maybe there was a little person inside, but there isn't. Purely puppetry, and that mm-hmm. was very well done. I Almost like the beginning when we see him digging his way up from the underworld kind of thing. It kind of gave me Dark Crystal vibes, which, you know, I know I could, Owen's not a big fan of Dark Crystal. And yeah. I'm not the biggest fan, but I, I, I like the atmosphere of that. Like this kind of dark, decrepit world sort of feel to it. And I'm not sure if it's a thing I can say I liked, but I, I got a bit of buzz out. Like the movie just chooses the most generic... Nine eighties and nineties mu- movie music, you yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Those are things I can say. Like the things they they really like. Bar for the puppetry, it's really irrelevant to the rest of the movie. Like, yeah, pretty much. Know, I wrote for things. three for three <laughs> for three things I liked. I've written down. Uh, no. <laughs> Again, <laughs> no. And uh, one thing, the captain's accent. Was funny. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if he did it oh, on purpose. There's another scene. Was funny. There's one scene where the police cop guy pulls Gnome from the edge of a building because he he's about to fall, and he pulls him over himself, and it's the most rag dolly rag doll puppets ever in midair, and it gets yeah, dropped. Yeah. That was fun. I like that. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like when you when you can clearly see you know when they try and have like people falling off a building or something and yeah. things and it's, it's very it's very obvious yeah, it's very obviously just a doll that they've dropped yeah. from an RJ. it's just funny yeah that was, that was fun um, <clears throat> I think it was actually done on purpose as well because it it realized, okay this movie's yeah. bad let's just fucking do this yeah yeah it might have been it might have been 
So, things you didn't like, and I will ask you to limit yourself to three in particular. Okay. Well, I mean, the biggest Please. thing is okay. that I think it tried to be so edgy that it got off a fence. And I know there's going to be listeners that are going, ugh, Daniel is uh, an SJW and all this kind of stuff and blah, blah, blah. But it's it's not that. There's It's genuinely offensive. And I feel like even at the time, like there was, it was just full of sexism, even like racial things in there. And it, it, it took me out. Uh, and I, I love dark, fucked up humor and that kind of stuff. But it's just low hanging fruit rubbish, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. I say this about a good few movies. I didn't think any of the acting was exactly there. Like, like none of the actors seem to really give a shit about being there. I don't. I don't necessarily think Anthony Michael Hall is bad in the movie, but he's so he's just all over the place. He's. It's just I don't know. Like I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to do. I'm not sure what anyone yeah. was trying to do in general in this movie, but like, I don't know if he was bad. Like, I don't think he was a bad, I couldn't say he's a bad actor. No, I'm not saying he's a bad actor. I just, I think there's a lot of good actors in this movie, but I don't think they care about the movie. I don't care, I don't think they care about the performance. They know this is a shit thing to do. I, and, I, you know, yeah, like I'd, I'd really be interested to know what uh, their opinions were, what Claudia Christian in particular thinks, or like how much she yeah. was paid. They were able to get her to shift a puppet. Yeah. At the end of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good I lord. Guess, another thing I didn't like. See, it's so hard because there's not much to this movie in the first place. There isn't really. I I guess you could argue the plot because the plot never caught up with me at all. It seemed like the plot was just an excuse to have wacky stuff happen. That's it. Yeah, more or less. And we put, we like we I really re I really tried to pay close attention to what was yeah. happening, but even still, most of the time things were happening, and I just kind of go, "Oh, I guess that's happening now." Yeah, and that that was like five ten minutes in. Yeah, I couldn't really like. I mean, it's not that it's hard to follow. It was just kind of like, sure, yeah, that's 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 gonna happen next. Cool, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's odd. Yeah. Anything um, you didn't like? Oh well, or did Gnor- you agree mostly with what I said? <laughs> I agree with what you said. I would just add yeah. that the the character of Gnorm himself, I hate it. Yeah, and not just because his des- he's like he's really ugly as a design, like he's not nice to look at, but he's just a f- he's a little piece of shit. Like yeah. for ninety percent of this, is just like. Uh, I gotta. Uh, he's just an asshole. And it's like lol jokes, troll lol, lol, that kind of rubbish. You know? Yeah, kind of. He's actually, and you know what he reminds me of now that you've just said that. You remember the old troll lol, lol meme face with the yeah lips sticking out? Yeah, he looks like that. Like yeah, I can't. Yeah, do the yeah. I yeah, I know he's making a face. I'm right sorry. Now, folks, yes, I, it's, I realize it's not really working well over the <laughs> the medium of audio. Um, I realized I realized just as I was doing it that nobody else can yeah, see me I'm, except you, but I was trying to yeah. imitate the... He was pursing his lips and sticking his chin out. Tra-la-la-lal face. And I did it excellently. Yeah, oh, it was by fantastic. The way. It, was, I, I became, it was actually kind of terrifying. Yeah, I became that, yeah. that meme. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so... Like, yeah, this movie was hard. I mean, I, I'll say this thing. I... No, no stage in the movie, I was going, ugh just be over now. It wasn't that. I was still interested in saying, like, okay, what the fuck are they going to do next here? Like, I wasn't, I wasn't against it against it. I, I was able to suffer on, like, it also is a short yeah. movie. It's what, an hour and 20 minutes? Hour and 27 minutes or something, yeah. yeah something like that. Go, like... That's, that probably includes credits, so it's probably a bit yeah. shorter than that. So that's the nicest thing I can say about this, is that I still mm. want to watch it to the end. I'll never watch it again, ever. No. I would not watch it in a million years. No. But it is on YouTube. If is anybody out there wants to see wh- what we're talking about, the full movie's on YouTube. Pretty sure the one that's on YouTube is not the uncut strip club version that we watched. I would yeah. assume not, but it's there. To be fair, that wasn't much shown there either. No, there <laughs> really wasn't. There was one woman dancing in her underwear. And yeah, that's Gnarm, pretty like, much it. For a brief moment, I thought he was going to do a, just start masturbating or something. It was 
Very like that was what that's what we were talking about. Like that was a thing in like weird pervy movies of the nineties where there was like a non human character and they always found human women hot. And it's just like it'd be like us looking at Gorilla and going, Fucking nice tits there, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I I wonder has it ever been done in reverse? Where like is there a movie where a human goes to Well, that's one movie that does both things. Howard the Duck. Like his girlfriend. Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck likes duck boobs. And human, and and human they boobs. like him. And human women like Howard the Duck's duck penis. Corkscrew penis, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Which is why... It's humanoid we were, enough that it's... Yeah, which is what <laughs> I was wondering while watching this, if Gnorm has a, like a cat penis or something. Well, we do see him like naked from behind at one stage. We do, yeah. He has... Yeah, he gets naked. He Gnorm, like, Gnorm is a fucking deviant... Essentially, yeah. he's a little sexual predator. He just like he's just obsessed with tits and sex and. And again, we see the um, woman police officer. Like she walks into the room when he's been like looked at, and he just stands there looking at, and she stays there for a little bit too long. Yeah, she's kind of like, oh, I wouldn't necessarily say she's looking at it in like a wow. This she no, stays there for but she's kind of like, like Whoa. oh, okay, and she clearly thinks about it for a second. Examines it <laughs> yeah. and kind of that and thought crosses her mind, and then she goes, "Oh, no. movie. yeah." So she's gonna clearly, she's gonna. If there had been a sequel, she would have. It would have been a love triangle movie with, yeah, Gnorm, Casey, and Samantha. She just sit on the ground, wait for the tunnel. What? Go. <laughs> There's a thought for you folks. Enjoy. And I think that that statement is the perfect time to move into the Jesus moment. <laughs> <laughs> So right. the Jesus moment is very meta today was what I just said. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was Dan's <laughs> statement just now. I thought, I know I'm, I'm not going to explain it. You you know what he meant. Yeah. So this one was like, a, we could, we could, you could really just say that this whole movie in and of itself is one big, like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I think that that's what the movie wanted, though. It wanted lots of that. Yeah. What's going on here? Like, so it almost felt not after all because we knew it was like, okay you're gonna do some weird uh, if you're gonna ask me with the jason moment it was the spitting thing when he was just like spitting out and mm, yeah like it's just dribbling down his face and i'm just like jesus that's probably on dv and it's, somewhere. it's so it, like it's how they did it too it was so visceral and like because it was yeah. clearly like they stuck, it was viscous like they, even. they stuck a tube in up the puppet's into yeah. his mouth and just oh, had it like a. It actually makes you feel sick just looking at it. My, like I, I don't like spitting like, in general. But it was like vomit. Ooh. He did because he because yeah. he, he can't. They can't make the puppet's lips purse or yeah. move to do a spitting thing. So he just oh. kind of went and like a bunch of spit comes <laughs> out in his hand, and it's kind of like yeah. stringy and sticking. It's, ugh, yeah, it's horrible. It's not nice. And he tr- he yeah. It's it's an attempt to do like a spit pact with Casey. Oh. I don't know how he knows what that oh. is. I got a nun. Gnome, uh, Jesus moment. Okay. It's when um police officer, the main guy. Again, I'm not. I don't care about the name. It doesn't matter. Um, but he aims a gun at not the main criminal, but he's actually like a, he's an actual criminal, and he says, "Scream! Oh Scream yeah!" For me. And he just goes, <laughs> and then he goes louder and louder, and it's just like, yeah, what was that about? Okay, stop. And I went. All right. Okay. <laughs> what the? F- Actually, what was that about? <laughs> was there some moment in the, at the beginning of the movie where he was threatened to? Like, I don't please know. Threatened to, hey, scream or something. Did we miss? But did did we miss a whole? Was was that villain guy? Was he not able to talk properly, or did we miss that? No, I think he was able to talk. He had a weird accent, but he was able to talk. But it was like he couldn't. It was like he was being told up, to do ah! some. Yeah. It was like he was being told to do something he wasn't physically capable of doing. Maybe, like he was like, like in throughout the movie, he was like whispering a lot, and maybe that I was like know. a meta thing. I, going, maybe on. I'm honestly I'm not sure. I don't know why he was even telling him to scream unless it was like a he was forcing him to do something. Yeah. For shits and giggles, maybe. I don't know, but yeah, that was a very weird. That was a very odd moment. Yeah. The, there's a moment right after that as well when that guy gets shot. Yes. Right. So K- Casey, like, the guy like picks up. Norm and he's hanging him off a of railing or whatever so Casey drops his gun and then you hear like a bullet sound and your man gets shot through his sh- left shoulder area I think 
actually very realistic uh, shot as well. Because yeah, it was pretty you, good. You see in movies, mm. there's like this big massive blood stain, but it's actually it was, quite neat. Yeah, it was realistic in that sense. From yeah, a ballistic, <laughs> from a ballistic standpoint, it made yeah. no sense because he got no. shot, and I immediately went, "Wait, who the fuck shot him?" Casey doesn't even have his gun in his hand, and then they yeah. show afterwards that it was the police captain, who's who's a bad guy, by the way. He was yeah. he was standing like on out on the street, ac- like across the way at an ang- at an angle on a corner with a like a pistol in his hand. Yes, yeah, and he shot him sniper. like. Your man is like two hundred feet up above him on a balcony yeah. with a thing in his hand, and he shot somehow shot him and made it look like it came the bullet came from the other side somehow. Yeah, and the amazing thing is like he instantly put it into like an envelope and like ha- wore wearing gloves so it could mm. be tracked. Yeah, and literally, I think five minutes later they seem like yeah, no, it seems really suspicious that uh, yeah, there's no the fingerprints found. Ca- Casey's partner <laughs> Samantha is at least in fairness to her, she's the only one that's like yeah, this there's no fingerprints on the gun. Casey is like a renowned amongst the cops for that he doesn't like to use his gun he's never shot his gun before yeah he never has his gun loaded basically. yeah he doesn't yeah. carry it loaded with him anywhere because he doesn't like guns and uh, and also she's like also i don't think the angle of entry makes any sense for this i'm gonna have ballistics check it or whatever and then so the police the captain yeah. is like damn it we'll have to kill her too my biggest jays's moment of this whole entire thing is anthony michael hall's career yeah i just don't because even in researching after this so he had a like just an incredible eighties run. Yes. Like it's outstanding by anyone's standards. He did National Lampoons Vacation, Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club, and Weird Science. Yeah, some like in the 80s, all right? wins like yeah. huge big wins. Then he did Edward Scissorhands, which I hate which is very popular. but a lot of people love it. Yeah. And then we found out that first he turned down the role of Cameron in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which John Hughes apparently wrote specifically for him. Which and, you can see. You yeah, can see and, it, he's, yeah. and he said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do any more John Hughes movies. I don't want to do any more teenage things because I don't want to be typecast, which happened anyway because he was in 16 Candles in The Breakfast Club, for crying out loud. So then, then he, then he was in negotiations to play the lead in Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. One of the best movies ever made. Yeah. And they couldn't come to an agreement over money. So he didn't do that movie. Yeah. Instead. And wasn't he, it was like 18 months or something they were talking about. Th- I think it was like eight or nine months. They were in discussions yeah. apparently to get him to play the lead in Full Metal Jacket. And apparently it was down to money. And he just, they couldn't agree a fee or something. So he didn't do it. So instead, wow. he did this. He did a gnome named Norm. In 1990. Yeah. Imagine. And that was kind of it. <laughs> well, not like it, it. Like, obviously, he's worked since. He's been, he's done a lot of films and stuff, but not like... Yeah, yeah. And it's just so like, Jesus Christ, man. Why? Surely just the chance to work with Stanley Kubrick would have been just like, fine, I'll do it for whatever. I don't care. I mean, like, a, a, you know, a director who was, like, worshipped as one of... The key directors of film in his time while he was alive it's not even a retroactive oh yeah he was good like he he was hailed in his time you know yeah yeah it's not like a it's not like a posthumous wow wasn't kubrick amazing type thing like yeah he was the director and still is yeah. for a lot of people yeah absolutely that's so crazy it's that was like the moon landing joke it's like yeah it's true that they got uh kubrick to um Fake the moon landing, but being a perfectionist, he decided it had to be uh, recorded um, on at scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought, no, I don't want to. I can't just do this in a sound studio. We need to actually yeah. go to the moon <laughs> and film it. <laughs> yeah, and that's how his relationship with NASA started. I mean, he went on and borrowed their super high tech cameras and all that crap to shoot Barry Lyndon of all things, because he wanted to do the whole thing using only real light candlelight and moonlight and stuff and he thought yeah these lenses are not good enough i need something from nasa <laughs> they sent him a lens <laughs> imagine getting that call <laughs> imagine you miss some guy at nasa hey it's stanley kubrick oh shit i need a lens is he gonna make a secret yeah. to the moon landing <laughs> oh my god a, yeah. maybe he threatened them i need this lens all right i know it's worth a billion dollars <laughs> but if you don't give it to me i'll tell the whole world that i faked the moon landing <laughs> <laughs> just just to let uh, people know 
we believe in the moon landing. Because like, he's going to say something now where he says, oh, I'm not, but go on, Cosy. I follow the church of the janitor and I don't believe in the moon. There we go, there we go. <laughs> it's just the back <laughs> of the sun, baby. Back of the sun, yeah. Let's, let's roll that into our final thoughts. Yes, Mr. Frodo, It's over now. Look, um, we talked about this before. This, um, we were wondering who's the person who would enjoy this movie. And you know what? I'm sure there's a whole bunch of kids who probably saw the naughty version of this movie who weren't meant to see it back in the day, who have a soft spot for this movie. They go like, <laughs> I remember being six and seeing this and <laughs> I had boobs and then woohoo. Mm-hmm. And, like, and those adults, fair play to you. We all love shit that we saw as a kid that we shouldn't have watched. <laughs> but yeah. this movie is dreadful. It is. A shit show like yeah and i i think from just from like looking at some reviews on some websites a lot of them anyone that reviewed it favorably their whole review was basically ha, i remember watching this when i was a kid ha, it's still funny and you're like eh, no it's not not really no and it's a you know i know we're gonna get some people say Oof. <laughs> like i said for snowflake bleh. this is just not good it's just cheap like pointless laughs and it's the laughs aren't that good yeah i it's a complete disaster from yeah. start to finish it hasn't aged well it's distasteful it's ugly it's poorly thought out and it was made for nobody and i think it exists now as sort of just a curio it's an answer to the question what happened to anthony michael hall yeah, and that's kind of it. You know, maybe you he, know, he joined them in the underworld. Maybe he just dug it down. Yeah, like it's that's it. if anybody, if you ever are rewatching an old, uh, rewatching Sixteen Candles, and you think, hey, Jesus, what happened to the to Anthony Michael Hall? He was a good, talented actor. kid who did so much yeah. cool stuff. The answer is this: this movie happened. Yeah. And so, listeners, a bit of advice: if you're ever gonna do movies and you get the options between doing Gnome or Full Metal Jacket, you know. Um, not Gnome, ever. Yeah, definitely pick the war epic directed by a yeah. world-renowned director and not yeah. a weird creature feature type thing made by a guy who's not a director. Pretty much. Yeah, well, there you go. Those are our final thoughts. Bit of a shorter episode today, so I think we're going to wrap things up because there's only so many ways we can say this wasn't good. So we have some questions. Have you ever watched a movie that purposely tries to be so bad that it wants to be good because of how bad it is, but it is actually so bad it goes right through bad, good territory right back into awful shite? That's concise, yeah? Yeah. My question for the audience, uh, did you understand what Dan just said? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. Uh, come back to us because we'd love to know. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure as always. Once again, should we give a little tease? Dan, I, Dan, yeah, if Dan has a teaser for n- the next episode. We're, we're actually going to watch a good movie that's mm. renowned Ooh. and you weebs out there will be happy to know it's an anime movie. Ooh. Oh, I'm excited. I'll say, I'll, I'll give one word to it. Puka. I have some ideas. Yeah, I think you know. I, I don't. Think you I'm know. not gonna. Your eyes just clicked on there. I don't want to. I'm not gonna guess. I don't want to throw out guesses because that would. You ruin know, the whole you'll thing. get. You'll tell me after. Yeah, the recording. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you go. There's a teaser for the next episode. It is has been a pleasure. I'm hope you guys all enjoyed it. We have our socials set up. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at sure underscore grand. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash it'll be grand. We post our new episodes every Thursday, post some teasers, and whatever you're listening to us on, we're on Spotify and Amazon Music and Google Podcasts and Acast, and we're trying to get, hopefully by the time this comes out, Apple Music will be sorted, but they're annoying to deal with. And another thing, um, folks, if you know anyone who likes our kind of shite that we do, uh, please share this to them, and... We'd love to just, we'd love to, the real thing about, so we're doing this podcast, I've said this before, 
uh, no matter how good or bad we do, this is for ourselves. This is to see if we can do a podcast that's entertaining and put it out there and hope that people will join, you know? But the real thing is we're doing this for ourselves. But we'd love to start discussing with people in comments, like their views, break it down. Personally, I'd love if we could actually bring that into, like, if we did a review on a movie and we go into the next one, maybe at the end we can talk about a few comments from the last episode and, like, address mm-hmm. things and talk about stuff. I'd like to just get involved, have a little community going, but, you know, it's going to be slow, but do us a favor, huh? Do us all a favor and check out our podcast, please. Yeah. And if you don't, sure it'll be grand. Hey. <laughs> Astrolog.